Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Dominic King. I'm a sports medicine and interventional orthopedic physician at the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio. Today, we're going to discuss uh, several guidelines related to the post-procedure rehabilitation after a minimally invasive tenotomy procedure. Uh, this is probably arguably the most important part of the procedure. This is the time that serves as a re-education, both of the soft tissues for the patient and the re-education of the patient themselves into how to use those new soft tissues properly. So let's go ahead and jump on in. Coming up with guidelines for this procedure, uh, this is after the procedure is done. You've already evaluated the uh, common extensor tendon with ultrasound. You've chosen to do MIT, minimally invasive tenotomy, uh, and the patient wants to know, what am I supposed to do afterwards? We share these uh, rehabilitation guidelines with patients the day we even talk about uh, the procedure and we're reviewing their ultrasound. So they're already aware of this. Um, they're gonna look at already having this uh, set up uh, afterwards. Uh, but let's go through this step by step. So we broke this down into phases. The first phase is the protective phase. We wanna be protective against that uh, tissue that we've just used this device on. Uh, and what do we mean by protective? For the first three to five days, we're gonna have the patient wear a wrist brace. Uh, this is a neutral wrist brace. Uh, it's obviously worn on the uh, side of the elbow that was uh, operated on. We don't put them into a sling. We don't put them into a sling for their shoulder or for their elbow. We want them to continue to move their elbow. We're not concerned about the motion there. Remember, we, we went in and debrided damaged degenerative mucinous tendon tissue. We didn't uh, cause any damage to the healthy tissue that's there. However, we don't want the patient to load up that tendon too quickly. And that's why we put them into a wrist brace. A wrist brace gives them the ability of still being able to move their elbow. So they have nice active and passive range of motion uh, to gravity with their elbow, but they're not gonna be able to flex their wrist. So they're not gonna be able to really pull on that common extensor tendon. It's gonna be more comfortable with them uh, while they're sleeping to be in a brace like that. Uh, it's also gonna uh, allow them to show other people that they had something done. So nobody's gonna be grabbing and shaking their hand too quickly. They're not gonna grab a doorknob too quickly. Uh, and they're gonna look down and they're gonna remember, even if their elbow feels really good after the procedure, they had something done. Uh, and that's the kind of protect the protective phase that we want them to be in. We want them to feel like they clearly had a procedure done uh, and they need to give this some time to heal. We start into postural re-education uh, pretty quickly. Uh, you know, most people who have these uh, procedures uh, done, uh, there was something that brought on the tendinosis in the first place. There has to be a component of overuse over time, uh, overloading of the tendon, but there's typically some kind of shoulder, thoracic, scapular pathology that eventually led to them overusing this common extensor tendon in one way, shape, or form. So just being able to show them uh, sitting up straight uh, in a chair, getting their head back, getting their shoulders back, getting into a nice, comfortable position. This is going to allow them to to kind of start building up a base of strength in their shoulders because that's what a lot of the therapy is going to focus on. So this gets them maybe a couple steps ahead. The next thing that we want to consider is cervicothoracic mobility and true scapular activation. So if you have somebody who comes in and they you can just look at their shoulders. They sit nicely to the, the sides. It looks like they have some nicely well-developed back muscles and shoulders. They may not need to focus on this too quickly, uh, but for somebody who has very protracted rolled, folder, shoulder, rolled uh, forward shoulders, somebody who looks like they, they sit on a computer for a long time, they have that kind of hunched over look, we want to be able to show them how to uh, start strengthening up their scapula and getting their neck in good uh, motion right away. Again, it's gonna be less that they're gonna to have to do in formal therapy. Uh, and this is nothing that they have to do with bands. They don't have to use their elbow at all for this. Uh, just sitting up in uh, a chair, uh, as you can do as you're, as you're sitting there, just pinching the top of your shoulder blades together, pinching the middle of your shoulder blades, pinching the lower shoulder blades, just that, that static big long hold that, that very, big kind of isometric kind of hold with your shoulders can already start to build up some strength and allow the patient to get comfortable with doing some physical therapy exercises every day. For the first five days, we recommend nothing greater than five pounds. That keeps them relatively limited in, in the types of things that they're going to be able to grab and lift. Uh, our, our concerns in this first phase really are not rupture. Uh, again, this kind of goes back to uh, one of the other lectures that uh, we gave on uh, the uh, tips and tricks and, and some pearls related to the procedure itself in, in some of our commentary about tears. 
But we're not worried about pairs right now. We're worried about getting a refractory tendonitis. If they load this tendon up too quickly, that tendon is now has a lot less degenerative mucinous uh, tendon fibers in it. So if you load it too quickly, the thought of could you get a tendonitis pretty quickly uh, is, is clearly there. Uh, so we're looking to avoid tendonitis. That's the protective phase. As we get through that phase and we're now getting into the first five days and the first two weeks, we have this restorative phase. We're trying to restore function. So this should be uh, with a uh, formal physical therapist. Uh, this can go out until maybe uh, 15 days starting into the third week, but somewhere within that five days to the first two weeks, uh, you want them to start using this elbow a little bit more. So a uh, two-to-one ratio of eccentric to concentric, uh, the short lever arm exercises, low weight, high reps. I, I would actually take that and just paste that right into a physical therapy order for a, uh, that the patient can take with them. Uh, most physical therapists are gonna understand that. Uh, the benefits of eccentrics to concentric, especially when you're talking about uh, the tendon metabolism, uh, trying to get tendons and muscles to coordinate to, together, uh, it, it seems to be a nice ratio, ratio to where the patient isn't gonna get too flared up, but it's going to vary the strength uh, in the forearm and give them enough different exercises to do because one, they're not going to get bored doing those kind of things. And two, they can really feel uh, when they're activating the tendon and activating that muscle. Uh, the high volume uh, is important to, to stimulate the metabolic activity. There's some great evidence out there looking at catabolism and anabolic type of effects that therapy can have on tendons. Uh, and what we'll tell patients is therapy uh, shouldn't necessarily be the most comfortable thing that you do. We want your pain to be around a three to four. That's going to be your normal. You shouldn't be zero pain. You should not have to push through pain, though, to complete your activities. So as long as you can do an activity, especially the physical therapy exercises that they give you, you're going to be okay. If afterwards you have a pain of three to four, that's your body telling you that you did the right exercises. You use those muscles in the right way. And as long as that stays at three to four, and then returns back to whatever your baseline is in 24 hours, you're doing the right therapy. I don't know that we educate patients enough on that concept because they'll say, I tried some therapy, it hurt, so I stopped. Therapy is supposed to not be that much that, that comfortable if you're doing it correctly, but your pain should return to baseline pretty quickly. Uh, we make them avail ourselves available that if they're having too much pain, we work with our physical therapist very closely. So sometimes they'll say, you know what, we tried to introduce eccentrics. It still seems like they're a little bit flared up. So we're gonna wait another week. And when we uh, start it again, we'll, we'll let you know. So this should be an active relationship that you have back and forth with you, the physical therapist and the patient. Again, for those first two weeks, we talked about nothing greater than 10 pounds. Again, it allows them to lift a coffee cup, start getting uh, used to it. They should not be wearing the wrist brace uh, at the two week mark, uh, unless they are just really flared up after a therapy day, uh, but they should no longer need to be uh, wearing it. They're getting more comfortable using this elbow, more confidence in the fact that things are healing. The final phase is what we call reload. So this reload phase is we're looking to increase the repetitive activities. We're re-educating this kind of load management. We're allowing the tendons to feel more comfortable and we're allowing the patient to feel more comfortable with that kind of load. Uh, most people will wanna say, when can I get back to my sport? Uh, when we say expected return by four weeks, what we mean is if you're a golfer and you had common extensor tendon operated on minimally invasive tenotomy, four weeks is probably when I'm gonna say you can grab a small bucket of balls, a pitching wedge, and you can go to a driving range. Nice, very slow type of uh, swing. I want you to tell your therapist that you're a golfer because by four weeks, they're gonna give you some stretches to do with a golf club so that you can kind of get back into it. You know, I mean, the reason why we did this procedure is to give people quality of life back, you know, not just to treat a tendon. And so that's why they did it. That's why they said, I'll take four weeks to get better from this. We know that it may take them the same amount of time to get back to work, that repetitive type of activity, whether they're on a mouse uh, or a keyboard or some of their, their lifting, by four weeks, they should be able to load. They might still be within that three to four out of 10 type of pain after work. But we, we again, say we don't want you to push through pain to have fun. We don't want you to push through pain to do the things you have to do. If you have to push through pain, you need to get back in touch with us because we need to figure out are we pushing this too quickly? Are we not loading it up in the right way? Are you not being compliant with the type of activities that you have? 
the expected uh, return uh, in progressive results uh, is around three to four months. And we'll tell people that right at the start. We'll say if we did the procedure today, it's probably going to be about three to four months before you're going to not realize that this is part of your life anymore. It doesn't mean it's going to take you three to four months to get better, but before you're, you're going to really notice that this is a completely different elbow, it's going to take that time. But if you remember, it took a long time for you to get to us. It took a long time for you to develop this tendinosis. So this isn't something that we can re-educate in a couple of weeks, but taking out the tendinosis is the first step to allowing us to re-educate the tendon and then going through this phase, protective phase, the restorative phase, and then this reloading phase gives us the best opportunity to make sure that we're not progressing you too quickly, we're not getting a refractory tendonitis, and you're giving your elbow or whatever body we've treated the right skills and the right education necessary so this is not going to come back in so you can see us less and you can go see your family and your, and your friends more. So just to uh, recap, <coughs> excuse me, post uh, MIT office visit, we normally see them back at about eight weeks. We still have conversations back and forth with their physical therapist uh, and uh, with them if, they, if they're having pain, but I probably won't see a patient back for about the first uh, two months. Uh, again, we made a very small incision. We used steri strips, uh, no sutures. Uh, we talked to them after about the first four to five days, getting it wet and being able to uh, remove those as, as they need to. So eight weeks gives us a nice opportunity to say, at eight weeks, you should be feeling better, but you should still tell me that there's something else that you hope gets better. And I say that to patients. I say, eight weeks, people come back in, they'll tell me X, Y, and Z are better. Uh, their pain is not the same level of intensity, and it takes them longer to get any discomfort. But when it comes on, it feels kind of similar to the way that it did before, although it does take longer. And we'll talk about the type of therapy that they did. I'll tell anybody who had a common extensor tendon, I bet if you, especially at eight weeks, I'll say, I bet if you were on the phone for a while and you had your elbow bent in a normal position, and then you stretched out your elbow after talking for about five minutes, it should feel tight, or you feel tight in the morning. I said, that's not because of tendinosis. That's because there's healing going on inside your elbow, but we need to get those fibers to lay down in the right direction. So you're still kind of feeling that knotted up tightness, but you're feeling it for a different reason. So don't be concerned about that. If you keep on doing your therapy, right when you get to that week, that month three, month four, you should be feeling a lot better. Uh, and that's just managing expectations. We start that at the very beginning conversation. We don't talk to them about the great things minimally invasive tenotomy does. We talk to them about the things that that can help them do over time. So three to four weeks before they're going to notice any significant results, three to four months before they're really just going to forget. And nobody comes in at four months and goes, oh, my elbow is better. They go, I just don't notice it. It's, it's not hampering my life anymore. And that's, that's really what we're looking for. Uh, you got to work closely with your PT group so that they can understand this level. And I'm just going to go back here just so that your PT group can really understand this level of uh, therapy. Uh, it's not just a hey, you know, give them a couple of weeks, give them some stretches. Uh, if, if your patient goes in and says, the therapist ha gave me a handout and said, continue to do these and see your doctor back, that's not the type of therapy that they can do for this. You removed damaged tissue. They need to heal in good tissue and that tissue needs to be taught how to work the right way. That's what therapists do. Uh, and that's why we treat it with respect. This is a serious procedure, because it's minimally invasive, you can almost take the connotation that it's minimally important, uh, and you can't do that with something like this. You're uh, going through the skin, you're going into tissue, you're changing the intratendinous structure of, uh, of, of that tendon, uh, you're changing how it functions for the good, but you have to teach it how, how to function in the right way, and that's, that's probably why this is the most important part uh, of the uh, procedure. Uh, in something that you need to uh, treat with respect. So uh, we believe that working inside uh, these types of guidelines will give you and your patient probably the best chance for a successful recovery after the procedure. Uh, as with all the other uh, presentations that we've given, we welcome your feedback regarding it and look forward to any questions that you may have in the future. Thank you everyone for your time.